everyone. Welcome to the Cardinal Sports Complex for CTN coverage of high school baseball. Tonight, some non-conference action as the Cardinals welcome the Hornets from Edina. Joey Ann and Howie Shapiro behind the plate with all of tonight's action. The first batter of the ball game, Ryan Moynihan standing in, takes a strike, and that evens the count at two and two. Oh, this will be an interesting contest, uh, you know, really for the Cardinals, who lost a tough one their last uh, outing against Maple Grove, 14-13, and now opportunity against uh, an Adina team who's struggling a little bit in the conference, but uh, in, in their rating and their standings, but always puts together a pretty good team. They come in here at two and eight. Well, and they're playing a a uh, tough schedule and a tough conference, but lost a lot of close games, a lot of one-run games. So it's not that they've been getting blown out. Nope. at all. This is the team that played Hopkins last night. Swing and a miss at the high heat and a strikeout for round number one. Nice way for Mike McMahon to get his day started on the hill for Goon Rapids. Yeah, we saw Mike McMahon in some relief against uh, the last game we did against Elk River. Now McMahon getting an opportunity as we see another look at that as Moynihan swings and misses at that. He had come into this uh, this game, did Moynihan batting 348, the second leading hitter on this Hornet squad. That'll bring up the right fielder, Will Chen. Digs in, first pitch swinging. It's a single out to right field, scooped up by Johnson. Oh, that's Jake Paler out in right field. Yep. Excuse me. Johnson's in left. He got a little dyslexic left to right there. But a first pitch single for Will Chen, and the Hornets have a base runner with one out here in the top of the first. A nice piece of, piece of hitting by Chen as he's able to uh, get that to the outfield and Get a single with one away and an opportunity for Edina to see what they can do here in their top half of the first. Left-handed hitting left fielder Andy Burtz will dig in next for Edina. Keeping a close eye on Chen over at first base. Being held on by the first base binder, Andy Evans getting the start over in the first base bag. McMahon comes into this ballgame with a 3.75 earned run average. Boy, he is not taking much of a lead over there, but my McMahon's still paying him a lot of attention. Off-speed pitch in and called for a strike to Andy Burtz. And we know the balls and strikes are going to be called well because we have Pete Larkin, Pete Larkin. behind the plate. Uh, Pete Larkin, uh, definitely one of uh, our favorites here at Coon Rapids. Coon Rapids' own. Yes, Absolutely. Fastball misses just outside, one and one. There's Pete. There's Pete, yep. Kind enough to wear the microphone for us, and we appreciate that as always. There's Ed Richardson, his partner on the base pass. It's McMahon's keeping Chen close to the bag at first. Yeah, it's not that he has taken a, in a big lead over there at all. He's out about two steps, and he's getting chased back. I think that's like the fourth time they checked, and now he's going. The pitch is called for a strike. The throw's in place, but he slides in under the tag of Preston Gazzoni, a stolen base for Will Chen, and now you know why they were keeping such a close eye on the speedy Will Chen at first. McMahon ahead in the count, one, two now to Andy Burtz. Or Burtz has to be careful here. He's, he's the leading hitter on this squad. He's coming in batting 357 on the season. And uh, they want to make sure that now with a runner in scoring position, they don't give him anything to hit to the alleys. Blake Wenland coming in and talking to Mike McMahon, talking a little strategy, how he want to pitch this next set of offerings from or two, Bartz. Oh, and I've been calling it Bartz because I was reading your chicken, chicken scratch. This one lifted into left field. It'll fall in front of Johnson. Chen... Dives back safely on a close play is Gazzoni. Is that Gazzoni? No, that was Zach Sather. Cut it off and tried to dive back. Chicken scratch. That's a, that's totally an A. Parts. Looks like a U. Oh, well, look at right here. Oh, if well, if I look up there in the fielding <laughs> chart, it's a better A. I'll give you that. Okay, thank you. Runners at the corners now after back-to-back -back singles with one out. And the catcher, Eric Nelson, digging in. Swings and misses at a fastball, 0-1. Nelson comes into this ballgame hitting 303 on the season. Does have a round tripper to his credit. 
Well, the Hornets trying to do some damage and give their pitcher, Cole Nelson, a lead before he even steps on the hill, threatening with runners at first and third. A speed pitch misses low. One and one. Well, man's going to mix his pitches up. Definitely throws a nice fastball. When his curve is on, he has an excellent curveball. Another fastball gets him swinging, and Bartz is going to advance to second, but no throw. So runners at second and third now, one and two the count to Eric Nelson. Swing and a miss. Second strikeout for Mike McMahon, second out of the inning for Coon Rapids. That's a big strikeout for McMahon because now it puts him at uh, two outs with runners at second and third. And just an opportunity just to, just to basically keep your eye on the batter. Ricky Peterson, the designated hitter. An opportunity to see if they can just get out of this inning without any damage after a couple of hits. Fastball up and in, 1-0. and oh. Peterson comes into this contest batting 235 on the season. Big kid, and as the DH, you got to imagine he can swing the bat pretty well. And at this point, a single can score two. That one died down and in, 2-0. and oh. And the first time in this inning that Mike McMahon has been this far behind in the count. And now 3-0. and oh. Now this situation, you got to be careful. You don't want to walk and load the bases. You just want to get out of this inning. Well, a walk doesn't hurt you as bad as a hit would. Well, this this is true. You got but the pitcher the pitcher on deck. Another big tall kid is Cole Nelson in the on deck circle, left handed hitter. And it's a four-pitch walk. That will load the bases. And now at least you've got a force at every base. You do, and this is an opportunity, though, for Cole Nelson to see what he can do, left-handed left -handed hitting. Pitcher, he's a, he's a tall kid. He comes in batting at 286 on the season. I don't know what his stats are, but he's got to be 6'3", 6'4". Well, and the pitch still misses high. Makes, I was going to say, it makes the strike zone a little bit uh, higher. Dina threatening to have a big inning with two out. The base is loaded. Fastball's in there for a strike. It evens the count at one and one. Nice pitch by McMahon able to uh, get Nelson kind of frozen a little bit on that. This one chopped back up the middle and it is gonna get past Preston Gazzoni, one run's going to score. Here comes Bartz, he'll cross, and it is a two-run double for Cole Nelson to get the Edina Hornets on the board here in the top of the first inning. Well, a nice hit piece of hitting by Nelson, able to get that one back up the box, score a couple of runs, able to advance to second on the throw from center field over to third. Yeah, I suppose that's a single with an advance on the run or on the throw. Good, good call. Thanks. I, I get a few of them every once in a while. We're going to have a pinch runner for Nelson, number 14, Sam Cowan. That would be a courtesy runner. What did I say, pinch? Yeah, that would be correct, a courtesy runner. Well, you know, since you corrected me on the You corrected me. I know. One, one good turn deserves That's another. That's right. Now all Coon Rapids needs to do is just worry about getting out of this inning. Pitch a little low to the first baseman, Colin Carroll. He's the seventh hitter of the inning for the Hornets. Again, two runners in scoring position. Carroll batting 208 on the season. This one chopped back up the middle. Gazzoni will play it on the third hop over to Evans. The inning is over, but the Hornets bring home two and jump on the scoreboard before the Cardinals get a chance to bat. Oh, nice job by Dine to get out in front, get that early lead. That's something I'm sure Coon Rapids did not want to see happen. Now they're uh, they're playing from behind, but of course this is our obviously early. 
game just starting. Coon Rapids, a good hitting squad. They come in as a team, Joe, batting 343 on the year, about 100 points higher than the Dino Hornets. To look at how the Hornets will line up in the field. Andy Bartz in left, Taylor Lagaros in center, Will Chen is in right field on the base pass. It's Colin Carroll and Riley Moynihan on the right side. Dave Mate and Don Todd on the left side. Eric Nelson behind the plate and Cole Nelson getting the start on the hill. And he did himself a favor by driving home a pair in the top half of the inning. Yeah, it's always nice when the uh, when the when a pitcher can uh, bring home a couple of runs to help his own cause, and that's exactly what Cole Nelson did in the in his at bat in the top of the first. And now he's got an opportunity to uh, keep the Cardinals in check. Take a look at what he'll be facing. Devin Kroll will lead things off, followed by Preston Gizzoni, Corey Miller, and then the third baseman Zach Sather hitting in the cleanup spot. Zach Jake Taylor. Will hit fifth, followed by Corey Johnson. Andy Evans in the number seven spot. Brett Boxwell is the DH. He'll hit eighth. And the catcher, Blake Wendland, rounds out the order for head coach Jerry Coe. As you mentioned, Nelson, a tall individual. Throws a fastball, mixes up with a change. And what his coach says, he throws a slurve ball. A slurve. Coach uh, Dana Weiland, second year as the skipper here at Edina, had mentioned to me. Well, very tall, long arms, so that, and a lefty on top yep. of it all. So could, could be a, take a little bit for the Cardinals to get adjusted to him because by the time he releases, it's almost like he's on top of home plate. And we will just have to wait to see what they can do. They're in a hole before they even get on, get into the batter's box. And we'll see the lefty-lefty matchup right away as Devin Kroll will dig in. As he steps up, uh, Devin's batting 367 on the season coming to this ball game. First pitch, a fastball in for a called strike, 0-1. Swung on and missed, and Nelson quickly ahead, 0-2. And a call, third strike. Three pitches, three strikes. Nice way to start the game for Cole Nelson. Of course, the game started with a strikeout for the other pitcher, Mike McMahon, as well. Nice pitch there. Called third strike. Devin watches that one go by. Preston Gazzoni now uh, coming in, batting 419 on the year. And he's not even the leading hitter on the squad. He's third on the team. Had a nice outing against Maple Grove. This one chopped down the third baseline, bobbled a little bit by Todd. The throw is still in time, and there's two down. A well, nice job by Dan Todd. And once, he, uh, once he did bobble that, able to recoup and throw over the first very speedy runner, and Preston Gazzoni able to get him. Is that See, Dan or is that Don? That's Don. Okay. That would be Don. Cole I just want to double check. And there's the throw over. He got him in a fair amount of time. Which is impressive considering the speed of Gazzoni. That'll bring up the center fielder. Corey Miller falls back to first pitch, 0 and 1. Nelson wasting no time on the hill. Called strike at the knees, 0 and 2. Corey batting an even 400 on the season. This one right at the shortstop. And a quick one, two, three inning. Edina with a 2-0 lead after the first inning. We'll be back with the second right after this.
Back at the Cardinal Sports Complex, the Hornets with two runs on three hits in the top half of the first inning. And then pitcher Cole Nelson, who drove in both of those runs, able to mow down the Cardinals one, two, three. A pretty impressive start for Edina. You know, they come into this game, we talked about two and eight, but a little deceiving. You know, we've talked about losing some runs, uh, losing some games by one run, and they're, they play in a tough conference. Five teams in that conference. So they end up playing uh, all three teams since Wyzetta, uh, Armstrong. All five teams all, three times. All five teams three times. For, uh, all four teams three times. All, right. I listen to you. I shouldn't even listen to you. <laughs> but it's uh, it, it's Wyzetta, Hopkins. Unfortunately, you have to. Minnetonka, Armstrong, Hopkins. Any dime. The look at the Cardinal defense. Corey Johnson in left. Corey Miller in center. Jake Paler in right. Andy Evans and Devin Kroll on the right side. Zach Sather and Preston Gazzoni on the left. Blake Wenlin behind the plate. And Mike McMahon on the hill. Swing and a miss for Don Todd to start things off here in the top of the second inning. Todd comes into this ballgame batting 143 on the season. Pitch is a little bit high, evens the count at one and one. Here's a look at the batting order for the Hornets. Moynihan, Will Chen, Andy Bartz, Eric Nelson, Ricky Peterson, Cole Nelson, Colin Carroll, now Don Todd. And this one hit left side, backhanded by Gazzoni, the throw to Evans, Evans able to dig it out of the dirt and retire Todd for the first out of the second. That was a nice throw by Preston because he was deep in the hole and he kind of, and, and a great play by Andy Evans at first able to dig that one out. There you see it again, deep in the hole, double clutched on that throw. It's going to be a little bit short, but Evans does a great job of scooping it for the first out. Got to bring up the number nine hitter, the shortstop, Dave Matai. Hitting. Made nice play on the line yep. drive to finish the bottom of the first. Takes a pitch up high. Want to know? Hitting a buck eleven on the season. McMahon hoping for a shorter inning here in the second. Another pitch too tall. Two and zero. Oh. And again, up tall, 3-0. Blake Winland's going to take a trot out to the mound and talk to Mike McMahon. Settle him down just a little bit, 3-0. Had two strikeouts and a walk in that first inning. But a long inning, 24 pitches for McMahon yeah, in that first inning. That's too many pitches. Uh, you'd like that through two innings if possible. Only eight pitches to get through the first four, his counterpart Cole Nelson of Edina. Now that's impressive. And it's a four pitch walk. Well, pitching's been yeah, a even bit. more impressive. Eight pitches, seven of yep. them for strikes. Pitching's been a tough situation for Coon Rapids this year. It's a young staff. Yeah, it is. Talked about Ryan Hables, who was actually pitching tomorrow night, uh, coming off a three hitter. Yeah, this is the first of four games in four days for Coon Rapids. Yeah. And I believe Baumgartner is going to go against the Maple Grove. Not sure who's going to start against Dacio. I heard it was you. I tried, but I threw my arm out. I threw my I threw a curveball and it just went. Did it make it to the plate? It did. There was a paper plate right in front of the mound. It made it right there. This one hit on the left side. They'll get it to second for one, but the relay not in time, but they get the lead runner for the second out. Moynihan on by a fielder's choice. They're both. Oh, and they, they come both out. Oh, that was, uh, I wonder why. I was wondering why Coon Rapids ran off the field with two away. I'm not sure what that was. Yeah. I, <laughs> huh. 
uh, one of the uh, the coaches comes out from Edina, and there's the head coach, Dana Wyland. We'll take another look at that, and I'm not really sure. I mean, he was definitely out at second. If we can see it here, there's the throw from Sather over to Kroll. To Kroll covering That's the bag, and there's out. the throw. I don't get what there's that was. There's no way that I don't, he was out. Another look. Let's take another look at that. I don't get that. That's interesting. Unless he, unless, unless he missed the bag, I could. I, it's tough to see the sun still even in this, in this monitor. But I, I guess I'm not really sure what the, what the final call was on that. Nonetheless, well, it'll go in the book as a five-four-three double play. Questionable. At best, at least that wasn't a call made by Gene Larkin. Not I would Gene hate Larkin, to get Pete I, Larkin. Pete Larkin. Oh, there goes, there goes. We have to take one back. Gene Larkin. I can understand why you'd make that mistake. Take another one more look at that. I'm not sure if we can. Uh, well, it's so hard to see on our monitor. He's there. The ball is there after. He, yeah, he huh. missed the bag. I think that's the only argument is that maybe he, he didn't touch the bag. I don't know. I don't get that one. Uh, there's the there's the throw, uh, 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 right against the bag. Yeah, uh, uh, drags across it. Oh yeah, definitely. Okay. Well, Cardinals beneficiaries of a bad call. Gets him back to the plate with no damage done. Zach Sather will lead things off. Zach, the leading hitter on this ball club, coming in at 469. This one high to right field. Chen over to his right, makes the catch, and there's one down. And you talked about uh, Paler not being the Cardinals hitting leader. This man is Jake Paler. No, say there's the hit. The, uh, oh, is he? Yeah, Paler's second with four, at uh, 459. So he's 10 points behind One. Zach Sather. Is he leading RBIs? 12? I know you're my stat man. I am your stat man because I'm the stat man. Pitch a little low, 2-1 and one to Paler. Yeah, Paler's got 12 RBIs. Corey Johnson has 13. Oh, so he's second in both categories. 31. Three and one now. Either way, having a nice day. Or a nice uh, season so far. Yes. And that is the first walk of the ball game surrendered by Cole Nelson, first base runner of the ball game for Coon Rapids. Jake Paler is also second in another statistic on this on this squad, and that's stolen bases at six. Behind Preston Gazzoni? With seven. Uh-huh. I got one right. Yes, you did. Gazzoni also leads in home runs that much. That right. would be correct. Three. Leading the conference in home runs, as a matter of fact. And then uh, Nelson will keep an eye on Paler over at first. Now he... Looks in, gets the sign from Eric Nelson. The pitch high and wide. Corey steps to the plate at this at bat, batting 333 on this season. And we watched him make a very nice catch in left field in the Elk River ball game. In fact, it made sports night. This That's yours. Up and out of play. It'll even the count at one and one. Hey, Red's, Red's in attendance. All right, Red. On the bike. Guess uh, time was called, according to Pete Larkin. He's 
very animated. He is animated. That's I, like, well, I like that. He knows he's on TV, time. so uh, you, 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 never, you never see him that way. But only when he's on TV, and he knows we're going to say Pete Larkin. A hundred times. A hundred and five times. This one hit into short right field. First hit of the ball game for Coon Rapids. Okay. Baylor rounded, thought about going for third, but ball in quickly from Will Chen. Yeah, nice throw in from Chen because that uh, that was a ball that typically could have been stretched for the runner at first into into getting to third, but now with uh, only one away, runners at first and second is going to bring up Andy Evans. Andy hitting 364 on the year. Still looking for his first dinger. I think this would be a good time for it. He's are you, a big are you kid. calling it? He's a big kid. He's got some power. He's a hockey player, so you know he's one of my favorites. I don't know if I'm calling it yet, but I, I'm saying it would be a nice <laughs> okay, time. Okay, all right. Just wondering if you're calling it. Lefty versus lefty. That's uh, it's a tough situation. Pitch down in the dirt. Both runners going to advance on the wild pitch. Nelson actually did a pretty good job yep. of stopping it behind the plate, but it got away far enough, and you got two very speedy runners on the bases. And now two runners in scoring position. No chance for a double play. Well, I shouldn't say that. There is still a chance, but a far less likely that there will be a double play ball. This one fouled out of play, one and one. The count to Andy Evans. One, one. Swung on and missed, and it's one and two. Nice off-speed pitch from yeah, Cole Nelson. That, that, Got that Evans handy. out in front of it. Yeah. The DH, Brett Boxwell in the on-deck circle. Five. Evans asks for time, backs out. One, two. And now resets. Interesting to see Nelson sets up all the way on the first base side of the of the pitching rubber. This one popped up in foul territory. May have a chance. Da no. Don Todd over, but it's over the net off the top of the dugout. And we'll try it again at one and two. I was going to say, you see a lot of a lot of left-handed pitchers that set up all the way toward the third base side of that pitching rubber. He likes to throw closer to first. It's all a personal thing. I would imagine so. It's probably easier a little bit for that pickoff move to first, too. This one fouled back to the backstop, and Evans doing some battle with two strikes here. Yes, he is trying to uh, try to see what he can do about bringing the first run Home for the Cardinals here in the bottom half of the second. Single to the outfield could tie this ball game. Oh, some speed on the base pass. Uh, Johnson, Corey Johnson's pretty, pretty speedy out at second. This one hit hard to right field. Will it stay fair? Yes, it will. One run is going to score. Here comes Johnson. Evans will stand up with a double, a two-run shot that will even the score. At two. Oh, he got a hold of all that one from uh, from this angle at first. It looked like it was going to maybe go foul, but able to to stroke that one into right field. And well, it's tough. You can't really you can't see, see down, this down line. the line nope. from where we are. So the only reason I knew it stayed fair is because I saw Evans rounding first, and he wouldn't have done that had it gone foul. There was there was two run double for Andy Evans evens the score here in the bottom of the second inning. It's tough to see from here. Yeah. Yep. Right Fouts on the line. Right, right on the line. Right at the fence. Nice piece of hitting by Andy Evans. Gets a couple of ribbies in, the, in addition. And now Boxwell with a chance to give the Cardinals the lead. Fastball in for a called strike, one and one. B squared looking for his first base hit of the year. BB trying to be the king. <laughs> oh, ho, oh, oh. oh, oh, oh. This one fouled back, one and two. Just a couple of bats so far on the season. 
for Boxwell. This one hit high to shallow left. Long run for Bartz. A nice catch. And he did catch that one in foul territory, a diving catch. And there's two down. Number nine hitter, catcher Blake Wendland will come up. I couldn't see the, the play, so. The umpire, the umpire Pete Larkin in, in my line of view. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The nice is a nice running catch by Andy Bartz. Blake Wendland at the plate now. I'm not sure if they were they playing the polka music for Blake. I, I don't know. Is is that a polka? That is a polka. Blake Betton. The funky chicken is a polka? Works for me. Polka? The <laughs> okay. Well, Wenland would like to polka it into the outfield. Oh, see very if he can nice. get Evans around from second base. That was good. I like that. I set you up good for that one, didn't I? I'd like to dance around the ball or up on the base pass. As well, even well. the even the Dyna coaching staff enjoyed that comment. This one hit on the ground, backing up on it is Moynihan. Fields it, throws over to Carroll. The second inning is over, but Cardinals score two and even the ball game. We're tied at two after two. How much you said you liked mine. Oh. <laughs> you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who would love to put up with you. Back at the ballpark. Nice day for the fans to come out and enjoy some good baseball. Gorgeous out, a little breezy. A little breezy, a little, a little breezy. windy. I don't think we're seeing anybody uh, going over the fence and left. Unless they time it perfectly when the wind dies down just a little bit. Oh, we got a good one. As it is tied at two after two. Oh, Mike McMahon has to feel a little bit better coming out of the mound here at the top of the third, getting the couple of runs his team did for him in that bottom half of the second. He'll face the meat of the order, number two, three, four hitters. Will Chen, Andy Bartz, and Eric Nelson do up. Chen and Bartz both singled and scored in that first inning. Chen with a line drive to right field on the first pitch he saw in that first inning. First pitch swinging again. This one fouled out of play, 0-1. That would have been Red's ball. He'd still been there. I don't know. Maybe he went over to check out uh, what's going on with the uh, track and field, or he's keeping an eye on tennis. He kind of had that central position so that he could keep an eye on all of what? the uh, action here at the complex. Uh, he, he likes his Coon Rapids sports. Nice curveball right there yep. for McMahon. Called for a strike, 0-2. No, no, Coach Bright told me, he says, when uh, McMahon's curveball is on, it is a beauty. This one fouled out of play. It'll stay 0-2. Now, do they get a free bag of popcorn? or? Oh, that's right. They... No, not here. No. 
Okay. Actually, there's the uh, concession's not even open here at the ballpark. Fastball hit back up the middle right at Kroll, but he couldn't make the play. And that is going to be an error on the second baseman. Another another thing we've talked about, uh, plays in the field have been tough for Coon Rapids, all in that, although in that game against Maple Grove in the 14-13 loss, nobody committed an error in the field, but uh, that's a ball that Devin Kroll should have corralled and thrown for the out, and that gives an opportunity for Edina to get a base runner with nobody out. That'll bring up Andy Bartz. He also singled, stole a base, and scored in that first inning. This one in the dirt all the way to the backstop. Chen rounding second. He's going to try for third. The throw is not in time. He will go first to third on the wild pitch. Oh, good with hustle nobody by, out. Good hustle by Chen. It's, uh, he heard from the dugout to continue to go. That uh, ball got away from Wendland. He wasn't sure exactly where it was. Took him a little bit longer to, to get back there. Made a nice it. throw. I was but just going to say he made time. a nice throw to the bag, but you're right, not in time. Chen did a good job of sliding underneath, and now nobody out and a runner at third. Yeah, and drive to the outfield. Scores a run. Chance for the sacrifice. Bartz will chop this one right side, right at Evans. He fields, tags the bag, and Chen stays aboard at first, or at third, rather. And that'll bring up Eric Nelson. He went down swinging back in the first inning, one of two strikeout victims for Mike McMahon in that first. And he swings hard at the first one, 0-1. Nice pitch there from McMahon. And swings at the high heat, 0-2. This would be a big strikeout for for Mike McMahon if he can get it. Then it would put uh, Cardinals with two away and just make sure that uh, they get the next batter. Although Peterson uh, will be at the plate, pretty good hitter. Fouls this one back to the backstop. It'll stay 0 and two. And Wendling going to go out and have a word with his pitcher. Yep. Talk a little strategy here at 0 and two with one away. Ricky Peterson, as you mentioned, on deck. The DH, who walked on four pitches back in the first inning, ended up stranded on third. Another 0-2 pitch now for McMahon to Eric Nelson. It's up high, one and two. Well, if the conversation with the mound is to see if he can chase the high heat, that was just a little bit too high. Well, if he had chased it, it would have been a great call. It would have been a great call. That one got him swinging. Strike number three. And Nelson goes down swinging for the second straight at bat. And I'll hear Third strikeout for If they can get Peterson, watch here. Is, uh, there's the swing, the low pitch. Realized uh, I think he wanted to hold up, but uh, definitely was too late. Nice job by Wenland to get the glove yep. under. I mean, it wouldn't have been much of an issue to either tag him or throw down, but... Nice that he got the glove under that low pitch and didn't have to do that. 0-1 after called strike to Peterson. And a little bit high, 1-1. One one. McBad trying to dig himself out of the inning after giving up the single to Chen. Or the, on, I'm sorry, the uh, on air. And then the wild pitch. This one hit hard. Kroll can't get to it. The run is going to score. No, it's not. He's thrown out from right field. Paler to Evans, and the run won't count. Oh, that's a tough break for Edina because they uh, they had a run there. Would have been three two, and unfortunately, uh, they didn't get it. Let's we'll see if we take another look at that. Is that uh, they came from the? Take another look at that. There's the gets past Kroll. Paler charging the ball and right. There's the throw. Oh, 
that's tough to see from that one. It's awful. But we've had a couple Very of interesting close. calls at first base here in this game. That one's closer than the last one yeah. was. There's the throw. Well, you know that. Oh, yeah, he's a, uh, he I think him. that's the right call. Yeah. I think that's the right call. Another nice job by Andy Evans to scoop that up. But you know Paler's got a gun, and, he and does. obviously the, the starting quarterback. But uh, surprising to see to see uh, you know someone get thrown out from right field. You don't see that very it, it often. It happens but, very infrequently. But he got that ball out there in a hurry, and Paler got it back uh, in a hurry as well, and a great job digging it out. There's a look. Oof. Oh, that's tough. That's, Boy, close. that's close. That's awful close. Boy, that's close. I, I It looked closer on that on that than it did on the last uh, angle. Well, and you can see Peterson more surprised than anyone that he got thrown out after sh firing one to uh, right field. And give Jake Paler the assist from right field. Well, the Cardinals are uh, looking to see what they can do about uh, untying this ball game here as we move to the top, uh, bottom half of the third. It's going to bring the top of the order up for Coon Rapids. Devin Kroll caught looking on three pitches at the top of the, or the bottom of the first inning. That one just misses, one and oh. That one's in there for a strike, one and one. Oh, nice pitch right at the knees by Nelson. Yeah, he does a real nice job of keeping yep. the ball low. Yeah, he does. A uh, speed pitch misses inside, one and one, or two and one. That was a nice pitch too, it just missed. Carl doing a good job of just uh, watching that one, being a little patient at the plate. This one fired but fouled on the left field line, two and two. Oh, Called nice third strike, second time that Nelson has retired Kroll on a called third strike. Well, Nelson has uh, Kroll's numbers so far here in this ball game. Brings up Preston Gazzoni, fired a hot shot to the hot corner, was thrown out. Watches one right down the pipe, called for a strike, going one. Yeah, was a, that was a play that Don Todd, third baseman for Edina, Dropped the ball, dropped out of his mitt for a brief moment, but able to throw it. This for the one out. hit over the head of Moynihan at second. And a single for Gazzoni, who ran into Carroll playing in the base paths, and, and Gazzoni is that's arguing. Well, that's it. interference because well, it is. he wasn't allowed to, to advance. And. Uh, and Don Bright out to talk to the base umpire. And, uh, yeah, I mean, he, he rounded, and Carroll was right there. Right, he was just standing on the base. Let's we'll see it again. He's just standing on the base. And, and he wouldn't have had a real legitimate shot no. to reach second, but, but yep. as the first baseman, you're not supposed to be able to just stand there in the way. Either way, Cardinals with one out and one on for Corey Miller. Woo. Fired one right at short for the third out back in the first. This one falls off the table and comes in low for ball one. A 
They'll check on Gazzoni. He's back in plenty of time. Oh, we talked about earlier, Preston, the leading base stealer on this squad. See if he's got an opportunity to steal seven attempts, seven. Uh, and there he goes, and this one chop foul by Miller. Makes it one and one. Well, Coach Bright told me that uh, Cardinals got caught once, but in uh, stats that I took off Max Preps today, they're 28 of 28. It's not so bad in 10 games. Uh, no. They're, they've always been an aggressive team when it comes to base running. This one foul down the first baseline again by Miller. It's one and two now. One, two. Gazzoni going again, swing and a miss. The throw is way down the line and gets away. Gazzoni is going to advance to third base on that throw. Give him a steal of second, and then he will advance on the throw. Well, that, that's a throw that probably shouldn't have been made by Nelson from behind the plate is that Gazzoni has got great wheels, and that throw is way off to the side. And Preston able easily to get into third. So he'll advance on the error. Second strike out of the inning, though, for Cole Nelson. Ed, you have a swing? They check on it, but Sather able to check that swing, 1-0. Oh, Nelson just wants to concentrate on Sather, see if he can get out of this inning without any damage with a runner at third. Zach Sather, of course, the leading hitter on this team, wants to get another RBI. That fastball right down the pipe, one and one. Zach uh, has nine runs bet in, looking to see if he can get his tenth at this point. Pitch up high, two and one. Well, they are shading him heavily to right field. And if he could go the opposite way. A lot of room down that left field line. Off speed pitch in for a called strike. Uh, two and two. Nice pitch. Yeah, it was. By uh, Nelson right at the knees. Yeah, a lot of, most of his pitches have been right at the knees. Yeah. You can see how much grass there is between the left fielder and the left field line. This one hit on the right side. Carroll flubs it. That's going to be an error, so it won't be an RBI, but it will bring the go-ahead run across for Coon Rapids. I took one of those cardinal hops that we've seen over the years on this infield. Second error of the inning for Edina. Taking a look at that. As that's going to hop. Watch the hop right there, right over the glove oh, yeah. of Carroll. Cardinal hop. We'll take yeah, it. Right on the edge of that infield grass. Hops up and over him. So Sather at first, Gazzoni scores, and Coon Rapids has its first lead of the game at 3-2. Jake Paler walked and scored in the second. Pitches up high, 1-0. And again, a little bit up high, two and zero. Oh. Just as I was saying, all his pitches were at the knees. Now he's now he's getting it a little bit up. And now down in the dirt, nice but stop. no chance for Sather to advance. Nice stop by Eric Nelson behind the plate. Makes it a three zero count to Jake Paler. Taken all the way, and he'll take strike one. Now oh, they changed it on the scoreboard to a base hit. Took the error away. They did. Well, he oh. didn't get a glove yep. on it. Yep. 
This one hit into right field. It'll drop in front of Chen. Johnson has to stop at second. Nearly got tagged out. Or Miller, rather. Say there. Say there. Say it's okay. somebody. <laughs> you'll, get it. you'll, you'll, you'll get it. You'll get it right. If you go down the roster, you'll get it eventually. <laughs> Eric Nelson coming out to the mound. Talk to Cole Nelson a little bit uh, about how they want to pitch here to Corey Johnson. I'm sorry, to Corey Miller. Now you got me doing it. <laughs> it is Corey Johnson coming up. Oh, it is Corey Johnson. That's true. <laughs> okay, now you know I, I'm right. I just shouldn't. Uh, I just shouldn't. Uh, Don't say against myself. yourself just no, because I, I would. Yeah, no. Third hit of the inning for Coon Rapids. I just want you to make you feel at home, Joe. Johnson couldn't strike. Hold up his swing on that one, 0 oh and 1. So that means if it's a single, that it's also an RBI for Zach Sather. That is correct. So he did get his 10th RBI. He did, in fact. Nelson trying to pitch himself out of a jam. This one hit back up the box and through the hole. They're going to turn Sather at home. The throw is cut off. No. Play at the plate, an RBI single for Corey Johnson. Three straight two-out hits for Coon Rapids. Oh, a nice piece of hitting by Corey Johnson, able to bring a run home, put the Cardinals up in the, by 4-2 to two now. And now Andy Evans will hit. Nice. He had the big two-run double in the second inning. Falls off the first pitch, and the neighbor gets another free baseball. Yep. Evans battled uh, Nelson the first time. Yep, time up. fouled off a couple of two-strike pitches before driving the one right down the right field line. That was a nice piece of hitting as well. Fastball misses low and evens the count. This one hit hard, and it's going to bounce in front of Riley Moynan. He tags the bag at second, ends the inning, but the Cardinals score two more. They lead 4-2 after three. Are we in trouble? No, you're not in trouble. I just uh, want to set some ground rules. Like, like what? Well, remember last week when you hit Vinny in the head with the shovel? <laughs> I do not recall that. Of course not. Well, it was pretty graphic. Too graphic for the kids. <laughs> so I'm going to have to block you. Uh, you know, i got to make this up to you. This is Vinny's watch, and I want you to have it. You deserve no, it. Thank you. That's really not necessary. No, no. Come here. Back at the ballpark, Cardinals leading for the first time after a two-run third inning. Three straight two-out hits, two with RBI. Now that gives Mike McMahon now a little bit uh, more of a cushion to come in here. Came my last time out, they were tied. Now a couple of runs for Coon Rapids, putting them on top by two as we start the top of the fourth. Cole Nelson's going to lead it off for the Hornets. He had the two-run single back in the first inning. Able to give the Hornets that early lead. That off-speed pitch from McMahon almost got him, got him swinging. It was close. Yep. Fell off just a little early and came across just below the knees. That one's about ankle high, and it's 2-0. Got a, got a big strike zone to work with. Yeah. 
And now he misses up high, 3-0. That one's in there for a strike, obviously, at 3-0. and Nelson was going to take it all day. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You have to take it at that point. Now we'll see if McMahon can come back with the uh, same type of pitch. <laughs> Up high, a leadoff walk. <laughs> and he'll have a courtesy runner. That would be... Uh, I bet you want his, his uh, name, don't you? It'd be number 14, that's Sam Cowan. Who ran for him last That night. is correct. You are on top of it, Joe Yund. Brings up Colin Carroll. He grounded out to short in his first at bat, takes a pitch for a strike, and he thought it was a little low. Pete Larkin didn't. And no one can argue with, with Pete Larkin. No, you don't want to argue with Pete Larkin. He knows his stuff. He's the umpire. That's right. You never win that argument. Nope. This one fouled back out of play, and McMahon quickly ahead in the count, 0-2. Runner is going, the pitch chopped in front of the plate. McMahon gets it, throws out at first. But it advances the runner. Yeah, especially with the runner going and the way that ball was hit, there was no opportunity to get the runner to second. So McMahon did what he needed to do, got that, uh, got the ball under control, threw it over to the bag at first for the first out of this inning. But that does put a runner in scoring position. That'll bring up number eight hitter, Don Todd, also grounded out to short back in the second inning. Now with a runner at second base and one away. Takes the pitch inside, one to know. And a little low, two and oh. McMahon's struggling a little bit with his control here this afternoon. Missing inside, 3-0. and I don't see any work in the uh, Coon Rapids bullpen as of, as of yet. There's a strike, three and one. Makes it a little easier to throw a strike when you know that he's not going to swing. There's a look at the Adina Hornet dugout. It's a called strike right at the knees and a full count now to Don Todd. Oh, this would be a nice out for Mike McMahon if he can get it being down 3-0 in the count. Pitches up high, second walk in the inning. Puts runners at first and second. Only one out in Wendland. Carries it out to McMahon. Coach Coe is going to take a walk out to the mound to talk to Mike McMahon, see a uh, little strategy, settle him down just a little bit. And after uh, the Cardinals battled to get that lead back, we'll see how long the leash is on the starting pitcher, Mike McMahon. Well, he's going to be a little bit concerned with his control here. As you mentioned, a couple of walks already this inning. Not what you want to not what you want to see from your starting pitcher. Not what you want to see from any pitcher. There is there is some warm up uh, action in the bullpen. Can't see it from here. Maybe we can get an idea from our cameras. Oh, 
Got to bring up the number nine hitter, shortstop Dave Matai. Yeah, when Todd threw his bat, it almost hit Matai. <laughs> he didn't, didn't, wasn't watching where he was tossing it and almost hit him on the on, in the on-deck circle. Up high, 1-0. Oh. Yeah, Matai walked in his last at bat. Cardinals would love to turn two right here. He'll chase Cowan back to the bag at second without a throw. Pitch, pitch misses inside, 2 0. That's in there for a strike, two and one. That one just misses low, three and one. Jordan Frogner warming up with the bullpen. Here's a look at him. Jordan's warming up. That pitch brought him to a full. Doesn't want to lose him here, Joe. Yeah, a walk to load the bases with one out would not be good going back to the top of the order with no. Riley Moynihan on deck. Swing and a miss. Got a little piece of it, but it's going to be a strikeout. And that's a big strikeout for Mike McMahon. Huge now, second yeah, out. Yeah, now with a couple outs, uh, just concentrate on the uh, on the batter in Riley Moynihan. See if they can get out of this inning without any damage. Look at that. There's a swing. As you mentioned, got a little piece of it, but right into the glove of Blake Wendland. I'll bring out Moynihan. He struck out in the first inning into a questionable double play in the second. That's a good sign that McMahon could start him with a strike. This one pulled foul, 0-2. Always where you want to be as a pitcher is ahead in the count, 0-2. Gives you an option of what you want to throw here. You don't necessarily have to come with a high heat. Definitely pitcher's count. Curveball just misses outside, one and two. Inside again, two and two. Uh, starting 0 and two. Man throws a couple straight balls. This one hit behind short. One run is going to score. Bert, Bart's digging for third. He'll make it now. Moynihan going to dig it for second, an RBI single. Leaves two in scoring position. On their, in their game yesterday against Hopkins, they were down 3-2, had, uh, had a runner on, and Moynihan hit a shot down the line. Coach Weiland sent him home, and sent the runner home, and he was thrown out of the plate. And I bring up Will Chen. He's reached base both times. First inning had a single, ended up scoring a run, reached out an error in the third. Takes a pitch up high, 1-0. Oh. Oh, McBain would just love to get out of this inning without any more damage. Runners at uh, second and third and two away. Hornets are threatening. Hot shot at third, gets past Sather. 
Here comes one, and they're going to send Moynihan. He'll come in safe, and the Hornets are back in front, 5-3. to three. Oh, 5-4. to 5-4. Four. To four. That's what I meant. That's what you meant. And that's going to be called an error on Sather, who let it get past him. It looked like he just misjudged that one. That was that was a fairly routine ground ball. And it just, uh, I think I don't think he got his glove down far enough, and it went underneath his glove. And we're going to see a pitching change as Edina has taken the lead 5-4. So we'll take a short break as Frogner gets warmed up, and we'll be back to finish the fourth inning after this. Irreversible consequences are 30 years away. 30 years? That won't affect me. There's a look at the line score. Three runs so far in the top of the fourth inning for Edina. They have a 5-4 lead. Interesting that the last game we did, Howie, Jordan Frogner started and Mike McMahon came in in relief. Now we have Mike way McMahon around. starting and Frogner coming yep. in in relief. And that could be the talk of the town right now. Very possible, Joe. Your chance to uh, learn about the people and places that make Coon Rapids and the surrounding area such a great place to live. Talk of the town, a new show every month with my friend Stephanie Ring. Mm hmm. Frogner coming into this game with a 5.79 earned run average. Looking for his first decision. He's 0-1. Looks like Frogner is ready and will be getting back to action. This will be the seventh batter of the inning for the Hornets. The left fielder, Andy Bartz. Singleton scored in the first. Grounded out to first in the third. Now he comes up with a runner at second base and two away here in the fourth. And Frogner puts it across for a strike. A little different look for these Hornet batters now with a left-handed pitcher on the mound. Down and away, evens the count of one and one. This one hit back up the box. Gazzoni dives but can't stop it. He's able to recover, throws home, and out at the plate is Will Chen. The uh, the uh, the fan the fans from Edina and also the uh, the dugout doesn't believe that that was an out. It's a nice throw inside. We're going to take another look and see if they have a reason to complain. It's tough to see from this angle. Obviously, we're going to take another look at that as that gets by Gazzoni. But he got enough of it to stop it. Yep, and he picks it up and throws it. And here's the throw at the plate. And the question is, oh, that is out. Yeah, excellent. Good, good job excellent blocking the plate. Excellent job by Blake Wendland blocking the plate. Take another look at it one more time. Had his foot right in front of the plate. That is how you play that position. That is fantastic. Yeah, nice play by uh, by Wendland. And a nice call by Pete Larkin. Yeah, how many times have we said his name so far? Not enough. 
because because Pete does he gave us a raise goodness, out of the goodness of his own heart sends us a check for every time we say his name and we used to we used to get five dollars a call now it's up to seven fifty. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. <laughs> Gotta love Pete Larkin. Yeah, that was a that was a great call. I can understand how how the uh, fans and and the uh, and the uh, the dugout might have might have questioned it, but that one was a good call and a, just a absolutely fantastic play by Blake Wendland. Well, he just he played his position the way Mostly, he's supposed to be played. Well, and another thing is he was out of the baseline when he got the ball, but as soon as he had the ball, the foot came over and got in front of the bag to prevent Chen from getting to the plate and came over and tagged it. If he's in the baseline before the ball, that's runner interference and the runner's safe. But he was out of the baseline, played it perfectly, and uh, a great throw from Preston Gazzoni right on target. Well, and you know, that all started with Preston able to knock that ground ball down and able to just to recoup and able to pick it up and throw it to the plate to have that play even happen. See the number eight, nine, and top of the order for Coon Rapids: Boxwell, Winland, and Kroll. Now he's moved to the bottom of the fourth. The Hornets take that lead, five-four. Boxwell offering the bunt up takes a strike. Up high, one and one. Swing and a miss, one and two. Fouled off, out of play, we'll stay at one and two. Oh, nice pitch. Called third strike, and we've seen a number of those. Yep, that was a nice pitch by Nelson. His fourth strikeout of the ball game so far, three of them have been on called third strikes. I bring up Blake Wendland. No. No. It'll bring up Hans Lodge. Hans Lodge getting the opportunity here. And after such a fantastic play by Wendland at the plate, Kind of interested to see uh, Coach Co choosing to sub for him. That's coming into this game, 250 on the season. This one popped up, out of play, and it's one and one. There you see, there you see his average, 250, an RBI, to his credit. Davo, two and one. This one hit high to short center coming in is Legaros, and he dropped it. Uh, that sun is high up there, and he uh, had it in his glove. He just took, I believe, he just took his eye off it. And that'll be an error, but it'll get Hans Lodge on base. There's another look at that. As Legaros, it just went. I think I didn't. I think he lost it. Went right through his uh, over the top of his glove. Hit him in the chest. Steve Schreyer will be the courtesy runner for Lodge at first base. Devin Kroll standing in. He'd like to uh, do something a little different than he's done in the his first two appearances. Caught looking twice by Cole Nelson. Foul back to the backstop. 0 and 1. Let's go. 
check on Schreyer, but he's back in time. This one hit well to right center. Long run for Will Chen. He's not going to get there. Schreyer round second. They're going to send him home. The throw, here comes the relay, and, and Schreyer held up after turning at third. And uh, he will stay at third, a double for Kroll. Puts two in scoring position with only one out. Oh, nice piece of hitting by Devin Kroll. I'm not, I wasn't watching uh, Coach Cole if he had the stop sign on Schreyer or not, but again, just a nice piece of hitting. Well, he I saw him waving him home, and then hit. he may have changed that as I was watching the ball. But. Well, that's, that's kind of what I was looking at. And I was watching the ball, and Chin uh, picks it up and throws it in. And, and stuff that we can't see it there where, where uh, Coach Co was. They're bringing the right fielder, Chin, in. Preston Gazzoni in the box. Takes the pitch down low, 1-0. Dangerous hitter to have at the plate with runners in scoring position. It's one for two so far with a stolen base and a run scored. This one chopped foul. Oh, that's Hans Lodge on uh, third Schreier. No, that is Schreier, isn't it? No, it's. I thought Lodge came in, but. No, you thought I thought Schreyer came in for Lodge. Schreyer came in for Lodge. Apparently but not. No, he's that's still Hans Lodge. This one grounded to third. Nice job by Don Todd to look the runner back before throwing Gazzoni out at first. It's a big second out for the Hornets. That was, that was a close play at, at first. It was a nice throw, as you mentioned. Just oh boy, nice just, stretch. Just beat by him. Colin Carroll. Brings up Corey Miller. Pitch up high, one and oh. Down low, two and oh. Miller thought about swinging at that, but wisely keeping the bat on his shoulder. Well, this would be a great opportunity for Cole Nelson and Eddie Dine if they can get out of this inning without any damage because it looked like that Coon Rapids was going to tie this game up on that shot to the, to the fence in right center field. This one foul back out of play, two and one. Called second strike, two and two. Nice pitch by Nelson. They believe in the count up. Right on that outer edge. Yep. And now one strike away from getting out without any damage done and conserving that lead for the Hornets. Just misses. And it's a full count. Big pitch right here. And he gets the third strike and gets out without any damage. Edina has the lead. They lead 5-4 as we go to the fifth. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Sports Night. I'm Joey Young. And I'm Howie Shapiro. Welcome, everybody. This is your ticket behind the scenes of Coon Rapids Sports. Joe Yan and Howie Shapiro here to tell you that CTN... Yeah, so they continue on in their schedule. Sports, Sports, night. Night. Sports, night. Sports, night. Sports night! 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 Sports night is next! Hello, everyone, and welcome to Sports Night. I'm Joe Yan. And I'm Howie Shapiro.
What is your problem, man? All right. What's going on here, fellas? The missile was about to hit the school. That doesn't change the fact that I don't have a car anymore. Who just throws a person's car at a missile? You're serious? Yeah. Who's going to pay for my car? Discussions in front of the uh, Edina dugout as we get set to start the fifth inning. The Hornets with a 5 4 lead. Eric Nelson will lead things off. Struck out twice. There's Highlight Tenon. The one and only. The Minnesota Masher. Or the <laughs> Mauler. He's been called many he's been called many things. Well, Nelson went down swinging twice, but this is first time facing Frogner. Breaking pitch just misses outside, one and one. Nice pitch. Nelson swings right under it, one and two. Little high, two and two. The one thing that hurt uh, Mike McMahon was control problems. Jordan Frogner doesn't want to fall into that same trap. One That's fouled mine. out of play. Yeah, we got to see some more hustle out of you, Shapiro. Yeah, I know. Once I hit 50, it just turned downhill from here. <laughs> I lost all my hustle. What's been your hustle. excuse for the last 10 years? Once it turned 40, it went all downhill from there. This one hit back right at Preston Gazzoni, and that's out number one. Soft line drive. That's the way the Cardinals want to start this inning. We're in the top of the fifth. The Cardinals had a great opportunity to at least tie that ball, this ball game up last inning. Unfortunately, couldn't get uh, couldn't get that fifth run across. This one fouled out of play. Frogner ahead in the count, one and zero. Oh. And now one and one. Did I say ahead in the count one and zero? Oh? Yeah. You know what I meant. I, well, yeah, and I'm sure all the viewers know what you what you meant as well. And they've long since stopped listening to me. And that's what? Good fastball right on the inside edge, and even Ricky Peterson knew it. He kind of nodded his head like, "Yeah, that was that was right that there. Was, that was a good pitch." One and two from Frogner. And called strike three. Went on the inside edge and then a fastball on the outer edge. And yeah, I, really, that, I think that's that's you know, so many young pitchers get hung up trying to trying to learn a curveball or a slider or uh, you know breaking pitches and if you can hit that corner, either either if, or. If uh, if my sources, which include uh, you know the likes of Burt Blylevin, who I listen to an awful lot watching the Twins, you know. It, these kind of guys, you, you should listen to him. And he, and he says he's one of the greatest pitchers of all time, should be in the Hall of Fame, but we'll get into that another time. Um, he says all the time, young pitchers should just learn to control their fastball. Absolutely. If you can pick your places with a fastball, you don't really need any other pitches. You know, he said work in work in the occasional changeup maybe, but learn to place your fastball, and if you can move it from – side to side, up and down, you're going to be effective, you know, through high school. Well, yeah, you know, especially with a young arm because you can really damage your arm by trying to overthrow, trying to throw the curveball. 
And you're, three you're right. and one. You're now. right, but you're right. Pitchers who uh, who can control their pitches, who can learn to pick the corners, are going to be successful at this level. This one hit down the third baseline, stopped by Sather. The throw is just in time, and that is a one-two-three inning. The first time in the ball game that the Hornets have been retired in order. Now an opportunity for Coon Rapids to see if they can again at least try and tie this ball game up, if not take the lead as we move to the bottom half of the fifth. There you see the lineup do up. Paler, Johnson, and Evans, the five, six, and seven hitters for Coon Rapids. Five runs on six hits, two errors in the field for the Hornets. Four runs on seven hits, also two errors in the field for the Cardinals. Well, we had a short show last week, Howie, but hopefully we'll we'll have another action-packed edition of Sports Night. We return to Tuesday night next week. Special Monday edition this week to accommodate today's ball game. And I and I'm not uh, I'm not complaining. You know, beautiful day to be at the ballpark today. These are these are those days that you just feel incredibly fortunate to be in our position. We have a change in the field for Edina. Uh, over at first base is Matt Lear, number 36. He takes the place of Colin Carroll. Next time we bring you baseball, Cardinals hosting the Anoka Tornadoes. That's coming up on the 10th next Thursday. Premieres at 8 p.m. Say they're a lead things off for the Cardinals here. Cards like to get some going here in the bottom of the fifth. Falls off the first pitch, 0 and 1. We talked about uh, Dinah coming in at 2 and 8, uh, definitely not playing as a 2 and 8 ball club. Three of their games have been uh, decided by one run. Well, this one's a run, run, one run ball game right now, but in their favor as they lead 5 4. Had that big three-run inning in the fourth. This one sky to center going back is Ligeros, and he dropped it again. Second one he's dropped in two innings. I don't know if he's having problems with looking right into that sun, just can't keep an eye on it. That's But you mentioned two by Taylor Ligeros dropped in center field, and that uh, not the way you want to put base runners on. Gives the Cardinals an opportunity now, which should have been an out as a runner at first as Ligaris is going back on the ball, just right off and the top both, of his glove. Yeah, both yep. times he's had his glove on it. Well, the first time it went actually over the top of his glove and hit off his chest. It'll bring up Jake Paler. Paler walked and scored in the second at a single in the third. Takes a pitch down low, 1-0. Yeah, especially when you have that lead, you definitely don't want to be giving him any extra uh, no. chances. No, definitely not. Extra outs. Check on Sather. He's back in time. This one hit high to right field. Chen backing up, makes the catch to record the first out. Sather will jog back to first. A fly ball like that's not uh, not going to advance the base runners. You want to get uh, see if you can hit something a little bit uh, more of on, on a line drive. Nonetheless, well, I'm uh, sure if if he had a chance to. Well, to, to change the trajectory of that ball, he probably, probably would have made it a line drive to uh, that landed and, and squirted Over the fence. into the corner. You Over know? the but fence. 
Hard swing at the first pitch by Corey Johnson, and he falls behind 0-1. Yeah, he might have uh, changed the trajectory to be over the fence. Again, they'll chase Sather back at the first base bag. Foul. And right I think that one, yeah. yeah. Just about to say that. It's scary how much we think alike after all these years. Yeah. <laughs> We've been together a while, haven't we? Ten years. Well, Almost ten full years. I didn't get you anything either. <laughs> well, our anniversary isn't really That's until true. the fall. So. <laughs> That's true. I'll, I have time to I have time to shop. Oh. Up and in. Max Johnson away, one and two. Although, as we're mentioning that, I should take just a moment to wish my wife a very happy birthday. Absolutely. And uh, we'll be we'll be celebrating our anniversary in just over two weeks. It's nice how, how that worked out for her. Swing and a miss. The throw down. And Sather just barely beat that tag. Another strikeout for Cole Nelson. But yeah, it works out nice for her. Yeah, it, it does. Birthday get... on the 1st. We got yep. uh, Mother's Day coming up on, what, the 12th? And then uh, our anniversary on the 16th. So There's another look at that play, the throwback. Boy, I don't Keeping know. Keeping at the bag, that was awful close. Yeah, he may have even had him. That was very close. This one fired back up the middle by Andy Evans. He'll get another hit in this ball game. He's been hitting pretty well. Two out single, puts runners at first and second. Brings up uh, Brandon Baumgartner. We're going to have a new batter for Coon Rapids. Nice piece of hitting by Andy Evans. Is able to get that one back up the box. The two away, put runners on first and second. Baumgartner comes in batting 261 on the season. Baumgartner ducks away from it up high and in. Good opportunity for Brandon to see what he can do with two outs runners at first and second. Cardinals trail by a run. Nice pitch in there for a strike, even the count at one and one. Got some room down the left field line if he can pitch up high. Two and one. Find the real estate there. Big hole in left center. Yep, big hole in left center as well. Lagares is shading him a little to the other side of the bag. Strike at the knees, two and two. Look at the defense in the field where the Hornets are playing the Cardinals here at this at bat with two away. Poked foul. Way too long a run for me. If you get one of the little motorized carts, I could get one of those out right. there. Right. Get the ball. Bringing the infield in. This one hit and hooking foul down the right field line. Bob Gardner battling with two strikes here. And two out, two on. All right, two out, two on, a 2-2 pitch. A lot of twos there. It's a lot of twos. Fouled off again. They're battling. 
Barb got her doing a good job of staying alive at the plate. Oh, and Nelson doing a nice job of pitching strikes. Absolutely. I think one of them that he fouled off with two strikes might have been a little high. There's another one. But he's definitely putting them in there. Making Baumgartner swing. So he knows if he doesn't get it, that's inning over. And that one hit him. Well, not what you'd want to do if you're Cole Nelson with two away. Now loads the bases. An opportunity for Hans Lodge. See what he can do now with bases juiced. Well, Hans Lodge in his only at bat so far in this ball game sent a high fly ball to center field, and it was mishandled by Taylor Legaro. So you see it as Baumgartner tried to get his feet out of the way and just couldn't. Got just a piece of him. It doesn't, didn't appear to have affected him. But uh, a big, big place spot for Hans Lodge. There's a meeting at the mound. Can talk this one over. Really haven't seen any kind of action in the uh, in the Dyna bullpen. Cole Nelson doing a good job here on the mound today against Coon Rapids. He has been. Yeah, he's really been a been a good pitcher here. And he's, his pitch count's up there. I mean, he's into the 80s at least. I mean, that was a nine pitch at bat with Brandon Baumgartner. So he's probably into the 90s. But he's still, you know, he hasn't struggled too badly. I don't know, is he? He's only given up one walk in the ball game. He's got six strikeouts. That's pretty impressive. Lodge a little half swing and and I don't know if Dad got a picture of it, but he sent the ball right at Dad. <laughs> Was that was that saying something? I don't know. Don't take my picture. It made the it made the Dyna coaching staff hustle. That's for sure. That one inside, one and one. This one fouled back and is going to clear the screen behind home plate. It's one and two. An opportunity for Cole Nelson to get out of this inning without any damage with bases loaded. With a one and two count, see if he can get uh, Lodge to swing at something. Out of the zone. Up and in, two and two. One foul back out of play. And if nothing else, these last couple of batters definitely making Cole Nelson work. Absolutely. And, and you know, you, as a coach. And especially def- late in this game. Right. Uh, uh, you know, just to make him throw more pitches is a good plan. Down low, three and two. And a big pitch right here for Cole Nelson yeah, this because is, you do not want to walk home the tying run. You definitely don't. With the top of the lineup coming up to bat. And he did. Ball four, his second walk of the ball game, and it costs him. Give Hans Lodge an RBI. Game is tied once again. Devin Kroll coming in. He had that big double to the gap in right center in his last at bat. Now Schreyer's going to run for Lodge. I, you know, yeah. didn't he come out to the I, bag? I, I thought, thought he, did, he too. did. Yeah, I thought he did too. Either way, maybe <laughs> we may have a pitching. We may have a pitching change right here. I'm not sure. There's been. I guess there's been some uh, movement down there. We didn't. Uh, On the other we, side yeah, of the we dugout, can't, where we, we can't, can't see it. it. They're throwing it up against our. Our truck, maybe. Well, yep, yeah. that's going to be that's going to be it for Cole Nelson. Really, a nice game for him. Tough way, tough way to leave as he walks home the tying run. But we'll be back to uh, continue the fifth inning after this.
60-inch screen, high definition. Football season is coming up. You can watch it right here. What do you think? I'll huh? take it. Huh? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. You're right. I don't need it. Layman looking long for Harrison, complete across midfield. Play action, Layman with time, throws over the middle, Harrison, caught it! It's called... Yes, your choice. Over a tackler dropped the ball and the Cardinals have it. Sam Weinberg on in relief, and he will take over with two out. The base is loaded here in the bottom of the fifth. And facing Devin Kroll, a pitch just a little bit low, 1-0. and oh. A little different look on the mound for the Cardinal batters. You, you, get, a, you get a pitcher who was about 6'3", 6'4". <laughs> Sam Weinberg uh, doesn't have that height to him. No. Probably closer to my height. He's probably taller than me, Five but two. who isn't? <laughs> oh, let's see. I'm not... <laughs> Come on. I'm just kidding you. All the short jokes I have to endure. Three and O oh quickly to Devin Kroll. And this is not a position you can be in where you can take time to get a feel for no. for finding the strike zone. No, because you walk this better, you score another run. And your team is behind. Found the knees that time. Kroll thought it was going to be low again, but... That was a nice pitch from Weinberg. Three and one, he has to make a couple more nice pitches. This one hit well, going back on it is Bartz and left, but he is there for the catch. And Weinberg comes in and gets that crucial out. Game tied at five after five, sixth inning right after this. of a child becoming a professional athlete are 1 in 16,000. The odds of a child being diagnosed with autism, 1 in 166. The odds say it's time to listen. To learn the signs of autism, visit autismspeaks.org. Back at the ballpark, and there you see it, 5-5 the score. Take a look at how this game has broken down. Dinah Hornets got on the board first. They scored two runs in the top of the first inning. The Cardinals come back with a pair in the bottom of the second, courtesy of the shot right down the line by Andy Evans. A two-run double that tied the score at two. The Cardinals took the lead for a short time at four to two, but then a three-run Fourth inning by the Hornets put them back in front five to four. Great job right here, stopping one. A great play by both players. And then uh, the walk with the bases loaded that brought home Sather to tie the game at five. And that's where we are as we start the sixth. 
We have a couple of changes for Coon Rapids. Uh, Zach Sather going to take the mound in place of Frogner, and we put Steve Schreyer over at third, and I believe those are the only two changes right now for Coon Rapids. So Schreyer's on the mound, and I'm sorry, Sather's on the mound, and Schreyer is over at third. Everything else looks the same. Everything else is the same. Of course, Lodge behind the plate. Got it all? I'm figuring it out. All right. I want to make sure you're on the right page. I think their uh, Cardinal coaching staff and Dinah head coach talking about the changes in the field for the Cardinals. Getting everything straight as we bottom move of the to top of the sixth. Bottom of the order due up here in the top of the sixth for Edina. I know where we are. No, I I know you knew where we were. We just kind of said that at the same time. You said bottom, I said top of the sixth. And you thought I was questioning you. I well, never, it, it's not like it hasn't happened. Well, I only question, I have a limit. I only question you four times a day, <laughs> a game, and I'm up to my four. Are so, you sure? Yeah, I'm up to my four. So I, I, I you thought know. it was more like seven <laughs> or ten or something. I guess I'm being generous. <laughs> you question me an awful lot. That's all I'm saying. With good, good reason. Matt Lear will lead things off. He grounded out to the pitcher in his only at bat so far. Actually, this is first at bat. Right. This is his first at bat. That is correct. He just came in last inning. This one fouled off out of play, one and one. Now, according to my stat book, this is the first uh, action that say they're seen on the mound this year. Been quite impressed with how complete their stats have been on Max Preps this year. Thanks to Don Bright. Don's Makes me an incredibly happy person. Yeah. Makes it so much easier for us to, to do Sports Night. And CTN fans who watch Sports Night will notice that we have all the stats for every game we're not at for Coon Rapids. And that, yeah, that's important. For the baseball team, but for for some other teams, we just don't have any stats. This one bounces out of the glove of, glove of Schreyer, his first action at third, and it's going to be an error. Hit right at him. Yeah, just one watches it. Hit right at him and just kind of took his eye off it a little bit, of it, surprisingly enough, and it went off the top of his glove. I don't know if he took his eye off it or if, if he it, didn't. If he didn't, he, he would have caught closed it. He just closed the glove a little early, got a little anxious. Either way, misplayed it. It's an error, and the leadoff man is aboard for Edina here in the top of the sixth inning. Don Todd at the plate. He walked and scored in the fourth. Showed the butt, ducks away from a pitch up high, and the wild pitch goes all the way to the backstop, and the runner advances. Two free bases for Matt Lear on two straight pitches. Well, that Not, means that means that Todd doesn't have to lay down the sacrifice bunt now. No, he doesn't. That's like giving him another free out. He gave him a free out with the air. They were going to give you an give you an out on the sacrifice. And now the wild pitch moves the runner into scoring position. Called strike at the knees. And I'm sure we'll see Todd swinging away when he gets a good pitch. Like there. And that was a good pitch by Sather. Gets him ahead in the count, one and two. About one and two. That, uh, obviously needs to record the out. A couple of, uh, of misfortune of plays where the first where the ball went off of Traer's glove and then the wild pitch. And a strikeout for Sather.
Sam Cohen, Sam Cohen up to bat now for the Hornets. We've seen Cohen as a courtesy runner for Cole Nelson a couple times. This will be his first at bat of the game, hitting in place of Dave Matai, the shortstop. One out, a runner at second base. And a good fastball in for a strike from Sather. A nice pitch by, by Zach to open the hitting here against Colin. Up high, one and one. Kind of trying to see if they can take this lead back in the top of the sixth with a one away and a runner in scoring position at second. Try and pick off, and it got away from Kroll, but good job backing it up as Corey Miller got in quickly to make sure that Lear wouldn't try and advance. Still one and one to the batter, Sam Cowan. Down and away, two and one. Good patience at the plate by Cowan. Was able to watch that one go outside. Three and one now. Getting even breezier here. Yeah, it's getting a little chilly. Must be cold in those short sleeve shirt. That short sleeve shirt. It's a walk for Sam Cowan. Puts runners at first and second with one out here in the top of the sixth. Back to the top of the order for the Hornets. Riley Moynihan had an RBI single back in the fourth inning in his last at bat. Now coming up with a tie game, two runners on base. Tried to bunt, but fouls it back. 0 and 1. Kevin Lammy. Yep, Kevin Lammy warming up for Coon Rapids. Down and in, one and one. This is just low, two and one. Say they have a little trouble with his control here coming into this inning. Moynihan calls for time, steps out of the box. And now steps back in, two and one, one out. Runners at first and second. Swings and misses, two and two. That was a nice pitch. From say there a little heat on that one. Well, and maybe uh, maybe the Dyna batters need to call time between every pitch. <laughs> <laughs> call time, step back in. Say they threw a great pitch. This one foul. Moynihan doing some battle at the plate. This one hit and hooking foul. And a uh, long, long run for Corey Johnson. No real chance of that because he, no. was, he was shading him to, towards center out in right field. And I know he made that great diving catch at the end of the ball game against Elk River, but yeah, he, he, he would have... actually have to <laughs> fly like Superman to get over to one in foul territory with where they have him lining up. That one up and in, a little chin music. 
And it's a full count. Doesn't want to lose him here. That'd load the bases with one away. Foul back out of play. And this will be the ninth pitch of this at bat. Nice battle for Riley Moynihan. And it's a walk. And the bases are loaded with one out. I will see. Uh if Coach Co is going to make a change or how quick he'll, quickly he'll make a change. Back-to-back -back walks after the leadoff error. So no hits for Edina, but they've got a huge threat going here in the sixth. And a good hitter in Will Chen stepping to the plate. Fouls it out of play, 0-1. I'll say there's quite a hole to dig himself out of here in the sixth. This one hit and just oh. foul. Now he's uh, now we'll say they're heading the count. 0-2. Got an opportunity to see if he can get chin. Another foul ball. Stays at 0-2. Cardinal pitchers only have given up five hits in this ball game, but some miscues in the field. and Three errors, four or five say, walks. Yep. This one hit well over the head of Kroll at second. One run is going to score. The bases will stay loaded, and the Hornets are back in front. That was a nice piece of hitting by, by Chen. You mentioned uh, when he got to play the, a good hitter, and say they're offering up a, a fastball, and he was able to put that out into right and get an RBI and get the lead for the Hornets, 6-5. Andy Bart's now at the plate for the Hornets. Good hitter. Another good hitter in this lineup. Nice stop in the dirt by Hans Lodge. One hit softly on the right side, fielded by Evans. He'll go home and get the force out at the plate. Bartz will reach on a fielder's choice. The bases will stay loaded. A smart defensive play by Andy Evans just to make sure he went home and get the run. Two away now. Cardinals can ill afford to give up another run at this point. Big second out. Here's Eric Nelson. He struck out twice, lined out to short in his last at bat. The base is loaded. First one popped up sky high, right side, calling off his paler, chasing into foul ground and makes the catch in foul territory. Or did he make the catch? No, I don't think he did. No, did not make the catch. Again, hard to see from this, from where we are. It looked like, no, nope, he nope, didn't. No, nope, did not make the catch. Foul ball. Hornets are all, stay alive. <laughs> it's 
So it's 0 and 1 to Eric Nelson. Swing and a miss, 0 and 2. Nice pitch from Sather. Now, if they can get out of this inning with just one run, uh, I'd say that's a pretty good, pretty good job considering where they were. Way up high, one and two. Misses up and in again, two and two. A little groan from the crowd. That was a little bit high. This one fouled off out of play. It'll stay two and two. This one hit right at short. Gazzoni flips to Kroll to get the third out, but Edina gets another run across. They leave the bases loaded, but uh, they're back in front. No, we moved now to the bottom half of the six, and again, it, it's fortunate for the Cardinals that they only came away with just giving up the one run. Because the Hornets uh, had plenty of opportunity to score more than just the one. Two, three, and four hitters do up for Coon Rapids. Gazzoni, Miller, and Sather. And they need some production from their big bats. Corey Miller, 0 for 3 so far today with a pair of strikeouts. Well, if you can't stand the suspense and have to know right now how this one is going to end, head to your computer, type in ctnstudios.com. And under the sports, CTN sports section, you will find the story. Also, possibly a few highlights online from this game. I know I'm having a hard time with the suspense here. But I can't I can't just look up at the website and find out what the score it's is. It's not there quite yet. Not yet. I, I'm pretty good. But not that good. But I'm not a fortune teller. And uh, actually, this one, tonight's might not get on until tomorrow morning. <laughs> Now that I'm thinking about it. Well, you know, it's my wife's birthday. Yeah, going you gotta, out, you, going out to dinner after the game, and I'm not sure I'm going to have time to write it before I do that. And you going anywhere fun? I don't know if you want to give a plug to any place. but I, I don't know where we're going, actually. That's, uh, we're going out with, with uh, her parents and, of course, my, my son. Yep. And I guess we'll, we'll take, let Aaron I'll choose. Take, I guess we'll take Charlotte along with us. Let Aaron choose today. Yeah. It'll probably be McDonald's. That if, that's would, the case. If, if he picked, if if he were to choose, it would definitely be <laughs> McDonald's. But uh, it's, I know he's a big fan. It's of not McDonald's. going to be. So there's a rock and roll Hall of Famer, that's Steve, Steve Gazzoni. Gazzoni, and uh, his son Preston standing in to lead things off here. He in the bottom of the six, takes the strike, 0 and 1. This one sky high to short center coming in. And this time, Ligueros able to close his glove on it for the first out. Yeah, he's had a he's a little problem out there in center well, field. Well, yeah, they, he's only had the ball hit to him three times, and he's two dropped errors. two. Yeah. It's an adventure. That'll bring up Corey Miller. As I mentioned, 0 for 3 so far with a pair of strikeouts. Also lined out short back in the first inning. Curveball in there for a strike, 0 and 1. And now up high, 1 and 1. Curveball doesn't quite drop in. It's two and one as it stays up high. Two 
Zach Sather waiting on deck. This one chopped and unable to get to what was Todd. It's a fair ball rounding first, digging hard for a second. And he's out. Miller trying to stretch a single and he is out. Oh, he's, 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 he's got some speed and he, he tested the arm, but uh, he's gonna be thrown out at the bag there. Take another look at that. It's a nice uh, hit, just a little bit over the uh, third baseman, Don, uh, Todd, Dan, uh, Don Todd. And then the right and left fielder, Andy Bart's gonna pick it up and throw it into second. First pitch swinging is Sather. It hooks foul, Chen. Can't get there. Oh, it, was, it landed fair. Oh, that's, that's, and that's, it bounced out of play, so a ground rule double. That's too bad because had he been at second, uh, that would have been a run. That would have tied the game up. Well, had he been at first? He, no, if he made it into second, not been thrown out, that would have been a run score. Had he been at first, they'd have runners at second and third with one out. Had he been at second, we'd have a tie game. <laughs> That's true. I like my scenario better. Okay. We'll bring up Jake Paler with a chance to try and tie this ball game up. A runner in scoring position now. Paler one for two and a walk, a single, and then a fly out to right field takes a strike on one. And another one, good breaking ball right on the outside edge, right at the knees. And Wein, Weinberg able to get in front. 0 oh and 2. That's a big batter for Weinberg too. He wants to he wants to make sure Paler doesn't uh, do anything. This here. one in the dirt and easily over to third is Sather on the wild pitch. If Paler can come through here with a base hit. Oh, oh you talk about patience at the plate, Joe. Oh, oh. I don't I don't know how anybody know could how have held off of that, I, but I'm not sure either. Apparently just a little bit outside the the whole Edina dugout thought <laughs> that that was a strike. Looked like a pretty nice pitch. This one poked back. Nice stab by Weinberg. Plenty of time. Gets it over to Lear, ends the inning. We go to the seventh, Edina six, Coon Rapids five. Kind of have the ADD thing to where I can't really pay attention that well. Might as well just drop out. So I bounced from like foster home to foster home. Dropped out of high school my junior year. I was hanging out with some people. Now I realize I shouldn't have. They join gangs, start doing drugs, try to sell drugs. It distracts you from everything around you. You're always having to watch your back. You can't really be yourself. The one person who really got me to go back into school was my mom, my mother. My parents were the people that helped me the most. I need them to know that it really does help me that they're there for me. Dimes are shiny and round. Nickels are also round. Dollars. Dollars are not round. Dollars are rectangles. <laughs> what can I buy with two rectangles? A best buy. You're right. Good job. When you talk with your child, you build vocabulary. And learning starts long before school does. For more tips, go to bornlearning.org. Back at the ballpark, Edina with a 6-5 lead. Take a quick look at how they got back in front. They got the bats going early. They scored two runs in that first inning. And then uh, came through with a, with a couple of 
with a uh, bases loaded single by Will Chen in the bottom of the sixth. Drove in the go ahead run and that's where we stand. Ricky Peterson, the DH, will lead things off here in the top of the seventh. Swings and misses at the high heat 0-1. Well, Sather's haven't been having a tough time keeping the, the ball in the zone for the most part in his stint. And uh, fortunately for him, the, some of these Edina bat batters are going for that high heat. Well, one hit. There was oh, a nice pitch. Nice. I think that's the first time we've seen him throw the breaking pitch. Yeah, that was a nice pitch. Yeah, only one hit in that uh, last inning for Edina. It was that RBI single by Will Chen. They had two walks and an error. This one hit and foul. It'll stay 0-2. Watch, watch this pitch just foul. Would have been a nice, uh, nice hit for Peterson had that been able to stay fair. Oh and two. This one hit towards second. Kroll there to field it over to Evans. And there's one away. Sam Weinberg up to bat now for the first time. Came in uh, in relief of Cole Nelson. Dropping down a bunt and a nice one. And a bad throw got away from Evans. Weinberg turns and will go to second. Well, that, that bunt. It was a totally, nice bunt. Totally Sader, caught the defense off Sader guard. quickly got to it quickly and then hurried his throw a little bit, and it was like right into the chest of Andy Evans. I don't think they were expecting that. And they're going to uh, give one. him a hit. Yeah. We're going to have a the courtesy warrant runner for Sam Weinberg, number 22 for the Hornets. That's going to be Sam Gyllenhaal. Interesting that they did not give him give they did not give an error on that. But I, I think it's an error personally. But that's okay. I don't really know what I'm doing. <laughs> Have you ever? Is that like a bunt double then? Pitch misses down and away to Matt Lear. A bunt and a double. Two and zero. A bad throw. Nice job again by Miller and center to keep the runner from advancing on the pickoff that got away from Devin Kroll. That's Sam Gyllenhaal over at uh, the, the courtesy runner at second. No relation to, at least I don't think a relation to Jake Gyllenhaal. But you never know. But you never know. Three and oh now to Matt Lear. And that's a strike. Lear taking all the way at 3-0. This one hit high and fading. Johnson dies and can't make the catch, but it's a foul. Good attempt by Corey Johnson. As we talked about, we saw one against Elk River just like that, or very similar to that. That one was hooking in the breeze. Oh, 
They did. They did. They did give him an error on that. They put a fourth error up on the scoreboard for Coon Rapids. Okay, so they gave him a bunt single, but he put moves the th error on the throw on the error. And that 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 it, see there at least I, I. There goes your bunt double though. Yeah. <laughs> Well, well, it didn't make any sense. No, of course he's got to adva what advance. What advance in the second? The I mean, yeah. that's not on the throw. It's got to be an error. And there's a wild pitch going to the backstop, and Gyllenhaal is going to advance to third. It's also ball four, and a walk for Matt Lear. So runners at the corners now, with only one out here in the top of the seventh. Edina looking to stretch their lead. Don Todd coming to the plate. He's 0 for 2 with a walk and a run scored. He also struck out in his last at bat in the last inning. Shows the bunt, drops it down beautifully. Sather throws to first, gets the force there, but a gorgeous sacrifice on the squeeze. You know, that's that's smart. Uh, that's smart baseball by the Dyna staff is to call that bunt there again. Cardinals not expecting that. Runner scores from third, gives him a two-run cushion, seven-five. Sack bunt with the RBI for Don Todd. You gotta love it. I always like it when you when you call the call the squeeze plays. Yeah. And good heads up pace running there by Matt Lear. Gets over to third on the pass ball. Pitch misses low, it's two and oh. to Matai. And now three and up. Lodge is going to take a walk out to the mound to talk to Sather. Trying to get out of this inning, two away. Edina has scored another run to take the lead to 7-5 will move this game to the bottom half of the seventh, and it will be the last three outs for Coon Rapids, whether they can With tie it up or the yeah, tie it up or uh, I think I think we're going to have a new pitcher. I uh, see Coach Co taking a slow and leisurely walk out to the mound. Of course, I don't see anybody coming in at this point unless somebody's coming from the field. Won't be an outfielder. Most likely hey, not. He's is pointing there... over to you. <laughs> yeah, the righty. No, nope. looks no. like now Lammy's coming yeah, up. Yeah, Lammy will come up. So we'll have a pitching change. We'll take a short break and be back with more of the seventh inning from the Cardinal Complex right after this. Shapiro here to tell you that CTS yeah, they continue on in their schedule. Sports night. 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 Sports night is next. Hello everyone and welcome to Sports Night. I'm Joe Young. And I'm Howie Shapiro. Joe Young and Howie Shapiro with you on the sidelines. Howie, what looks like a very nice night, but it is cold and windy here at the show. You look at this matchup on paper and there's no contest, but this game is not played on paper, and you know in this conference anything can happen. Anderson drops back to pass, has a little time. And he will pitch again to Muhlenberg running right. Man, Howie, a big opponent coming in for the Coon Rabbits Cardinals. This defense only giving up 11 points a game.
There is the story. Cardinals have had more hits, but also more errors. And more importantly, the Hornets have scored more runs. The Hornets have done a nice job in this game and, and really coming back and, and taking that, that lead. Now we're going to see Kevin Lammy on the mound for the Cardinals, getting an opportunity to see if he can get them out of this inning and get there at bat, see what they can do about getting back into this ballgame. Well, Ian Aritz, a runner at third base, but also a 3-0 count against Dave Matai. Well, Kevin has pitched one inning so far this year, and he's got an ERA of 14. Well, that means he gave up two runs. Yeah. He'll come in uh, with a 3 0 count. Just looking for that last out of the inning with a runner at third. And there's ball four. And tough, to, tough to come in at 3 0 and save the at bat. Back to the top of the order, Riley Moynihan at the plate. Runners at the corners, two away. Pitch is low, one and oh. That one catches the strike zone and evens the count. Well, the Cardinals are going to, once they get out of this, they're going to be in a tough position, trailing by two. Now it's down in the dirt. Nice stop by Lodge behind the plate, two and one. Yeah, it would be a much more pleasant afternoon if it wasn't for the breeze. Yeah, it's, you know, you you must, again, you must be chilly, a little chilly in that short sleeve shirt. Got the, this one tapped off the end of the bat. Lammy Fields throws to Evans. The inning is over. But we go to the bottom of the seventh with the Hornets on top, seven to five. And a big hole, as you mentioned. Oh, yeah, it's a, it is a big For the hole. Cardinals to try and dig themselves out of. Sam Weinberg came in uh, in relief of Nelson, doing a pretty good job on the mound in his stint. Six, seven, and eight hitters do up for the Cardinals. Johnson, Evans, and Baumgartner. We'll see if Coach Co changes anything, but those are the hitters that are due up in the lineup. Yeah, it's a, it's a little chilly. It's a little chilly. I keep trying to move back so that I'm not in the shadow of Neil Hennett, but hard not to be there, in the there shadow. There we go. Hard not to be in the shadow of... of of the Miniota Mauler. The Miniota Mauler, the masher, highlights Hennon himself. There he is. CTN zone, Neil Hennon. Yeah, we're in a shady spot, and it's breezy. Yeah, it's chilly. So, yeah, that's why we've been standing for oh, there we are. the last three innings, shivering. Neil's, Neil's I don't know the, if you can Neil's zoom in close enough, Brandon, to see how my all the hair on my arms is standing straight up. That's okay. It's all right. Tough. Neil, yeah. Tough. Go, go ahead. We'll. we'll uh, well there you all, go. You, get, you, can, you can see it not only standing up but blowing in the breeze. Now let me tell you, consistent. that's good television, yeah. right there. Nothing. Joe's arm hair and the ant crawling around in it. <laughs> that ought to make sports night. Of course, Neil says no, and Neil's in charge of all of that. No, the only time I make Sports Center is when I like fall Sports on night. the ice. Yeah, that one just curves foul for Corey Johnson. Oh, and one. Yeah, looks made like, good contact. But. Yeah, he did. Obviously, the Cardinals need base runners.
down and away, one and one. Andy Evans on deck, he's two for three today with a couple of RBI. Down and away again. Oh, nice Good pitch. Good off-speed pitch right across to even the count at 2-2. Two two. That one misses outside. A full count to the leadoff man, Corey Johnson, here in the bottom of the seventh inning. You know, I mean, doesn't want to put him on here at this situation with nobody out. Cardinals needing two to tie, three to win. He's going to put him on. And there's a walk. Weinberg and the Hornets trying to protect that two-run lead. <laughs> You're bouncing around. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little chilly. I'm just trying to trying to get a little body heat going. Get the blood flowing, do yep. some jumping jacks yep. between innings. Yep. I have my jacket in the car, which of course is it's really a good, good place, place for, for it. Yeah. Pitch down in the dirt, nice stop behind the plate by Nelson, but still going to allow Johnson to reach second on the wild pitch. Pitching staff's going to go over. Uh, pitching coach going to go over and talk to Sam Weinberg. One and zero, runner at second, nobody down. Cardinals trailing by two. Trying to make a comeback. <sighs> yeah, I'm a little chill. Yeah, I bet you are. There's something but I, in the blanket, like maybe it. you could borrow yeah. it. All right, I can I can handle it. I'm a, You're hockey, a man. I'm a hockey player. You're a man. Or I was at one point in time. Yeah, but the blood gets a little thinner over time. This one ripped right at first and unable to make the play as Lear. Here comes Johnson around. He's going to score. An RBI single for Andy Evans. Gets the Cardinals back within one, and he represents the tying run. Well, now and a nice piece of hitting by Andy Evans. Now we're going to see how important that seventh run was for Edina. Well, and, do you, and here's the question. Do you, do you, it doesn't look like they're going to, but I, you know, Andy's Andy's not slow, but he's not fleet of foot either. Oh, he's had a nice night at the Oh, play. yeah, absolutely. Three for four, three RBI, a pair of singles, and a double. But uh, doesn't but look like right. they're going to try and right. put in, you know, a, more of a stealing threat or he's not or, a, a, or a faster base runner. Not, he's not a speedster on the base pass. Is but that what but at the same time, if you were to do that and you tie the game and it goes into extra innings, you don't get it back. Right. So, Baumgartner at the plate. He was hit by a pitch and is only at bat so far tonight. After a great battle, this curveball stays up and in. One and zero. He fouled off four two-strike pitches. Ducks away from that one, 2-0. and oh. Boy, I thought it, at first when that bat ball first came off the bat of Andy Evans, I thought that Lear made the play yeah, on, a, looked, on a screaming yep. line drive, but it did get past him. And Johnson didn't even pause at, at third. He just cruised around, and this one just rolls foul in front of Lear. Baumgartner pushing it a little bit too hard. That was It was good thought, too, because it was e yep. would easily advance the base runner yep. second. And, and he, he did the right thing, bunting it to the right side of the infield. Gives you the best chance of getting that sacrifice and moving that runner over. That would be correct. But uh, just pushed a little too strong. And uh, it looked like for a second there that it was going to stay fair, but yep. it did roll foul just before Lear scooped it up. Shows the bunt again, offered, and got a piece of it, and it's two and two. 
Now it takes the bunt situation away yep. now with two strikes. Unless you're real, real confident in your bunting ability, which after you've bunted two fouls, <laughs> you're, prob you're probably going to swing away. Yeah, I'm guessing you're not going to you're gonna, not going to try and do that again. This one foul out of play. Well, the one thing you don't want to do is hit into a double play in this situation. No. Home run would be nice, but uh, let's face it. With the wind, uh, yeah, I, nobody's hitting I, it no. out of the park with this wind. No. Barry Bonds, perhaps, but he doesn't play for Coon Rapids or he Diamond. Full count now. At least not that Barry Bonds. No Barry Bonds that I know <laughs> of. But you'd need some serious muscle to battle this win. Or as you said earlier, time it just right. But it really hasn't let up at all. This one fouled. That's Spiro mine. ball. Get it, it, get it, get it. I got it, it. I got it. Oh. oh, I just missed it. Nice, nice effort. Though. Thank you. Another battle at the plate for Brandon Baumgartner, making the most out of his at-bats. He saw nine pitches in the first at-bat. This is the eighth pitch of this at-bat. Make it. He'll, he'll be going for number nine. He's now fouled off seven two-strike pitches in two at-bats. That's called, that's called battling at the plate. And a good eye. Good. Yep. Good job. Protecting the plate and time again. Well, since I haven't said his name in a while, Pete Larkin gonna brush off the plate. <laughs> Another seven fifty. Another seven fifty <laughs> from, from Pete Larkin. Yeah, uh, Pete Larkin, good guy. He is great good guy. umpire. Yep. Say he's he's umped a nice game. Yes, he has. One controversial call, but I think the slow motion replay play proved that Pete Larkin was, in fact, correct. That one's up high in a walk. Evans will take a hard run at second as the ball went all the way to the backstop, but he's going to stay there. Runners at first and second. Still nobody out here. In the bottom of the seventh inning, Hans Lodge <coughs> is going to come to the plate. Lodge is 0 for 1, but has reached base twice, has an RBI. Yes, Got an does. RBI on the walk in his last at bat. And now the question becomes for the Dyna pitching staff, how how long is the leash for Sam Weinberg exactly. after two walks? Shows the bunt, pulls it back, takes the ball, 1-0. Oh. Boy, and, and, I mean, uh, Andy, two Evans walks, was, Andy Evans was way off the bag on that one. Two walks and a single so far here in the bottom of the seventh inning. No no outs and two on. Lodge will show the bunt again. Bunt oh, that was foul. Mine. Almost. A little more effort out of you. Again, I got to bring my glove. Yeah, the first baseman's glove. He could have. I could have. I did you that, that, that big that giant one. one I have. Yeah, I could have. It's actually Paul Bunyan's first yes. baseman's glove. He gave it to me. That was nice. Yeah. yeah. Offers and a strike on the bunt, and it's one and two. A throw down two by Nelson. Try and get Evans off at second. Okay, I don't think there's gonna, there, he's going to bunt again now. Not with two strikes. Unless you're, again, awfully confident of your bunting ability. I think Hans is going to swing away. I think so, too. No, he's showing the bunt, and he dropped it down. It's he's foul. Out. And he's out. It was a pretty nice bunt. It just barely went foul, too. Interesting to see the coaching staff continue to call for the bunt. They were evidently very confident in his ability. And he, and you said he did. He laid down a pretty nice bunt. Unfortunately, went foul with two strikes. Yeah, it only went foul by six or eight inches. That'll bring up Devin Kroll. He's one for four. A couple of strikeouts, a double back in the fourth inning.
Fastball just misses low, 1-0. Curveball stays inside, 2-0. A little bit of a groan from the crop. Up high, 3-0. Well, you talked about it. What kind of leash do we have on, on uh, Weinberg in terms of how many pitches do you give him? 3-0 and at this point. I would assume that uh, Crow is going to take this one. And it's a four-pitch walk to load the bases. The winning run now in scoring position oh, for one make, of the Cardinals' best, pitch, best hitters. They're going to make a change. They're going to make a pitching change. Third walk of the inning. Peter O'Neill. Uh, we'll take a short break as O'Neill gets warmed up and be back for the final, the end of the ball game here at Cardinal Sports Cup. Joe Young and Howie Shapiro with you on the sidelines. Howie, what looks like a very nice night, but it is cold and windy here. So you look at this matchup on paper, and there's no contest, but this game is not played on paper, and you know in this conference anything can happen. Anderson drops back to pass, has a little time. And he will pitch again, and Muhlenberg running right. Man, Howie, a big opponent coming in for the Coon Rabbits Cardinals. This defense only giving up 11 points a game. Coon Rabbits back on top. Unbelievable. Looking long for Harrison, complete across midfield. Play action, Lehman with time, throws over the middle, Harrison, caught it! And a hit call, and we have hit, your choice. Over a tackler, dropped the ball, and the Cardinals have it. CTN Studios is proud to offer the best in local programming. Now your business can be a part of it too. Become a CTN Studios sponsor. Find out more today. Back at the ballpark. Bases loaded for the Cardinals here in the bottom of the seventh inning. They trail by a run. O'Neill, the new pitcher, and he will face Preston Gazzoni. Peter O'Neill on the mound for the Hornets. First pitch hit into right center, or left center. It's going to drop. One run is going to score. We're tied up. Oh, it looked like uh, Lagares hesitated a little bit coming in. Wasn't sure if that ball was going to drop. And with this wind, it kind of kept the ball up a little bit. Now an opportunity for Corey Miller. Let's see if he can win this game for Coon Rapids. 7-7 here in the bottom of the seventh. Miller looking for his Only one away. second hit. Pitch is low, one and oh. Foul back out of play, one and one. Fouled off, one and two. Miller couldn't check his swing and he is called out. Strike three. And now it'll bring up Zach Sather. An opportunity for Sather to see if he can win the ball game now for Coon Rapids. Two away, bases loaded. 
Base hit wins it. Pitch down low, one and oh. A walk wins it. Oh, or a walk, that would be correct. This one hit back up the middle. O'Neill can't get to it. Long run, the throw, not in time. The Cardinals win. Boy, what a way for Coon Rapids to win the game. A soft ground ball. Can't, uh, can't field it. And the Cardinals are going to get the victory and a narrow one at that. Eight to seven. Another one run, one run loss for the Hornets from Edina. Tough loss for Edina. Yeah, and just, yeah, he, what a weird little single. I mean, it just was trickling. And O'Neill was was still in his pitching motion as it got back to him, and it just he he couldn't adjust fast enough to to get to it. And uh, charging quickly was Matai from. From uh, from short, he he hustled and he made a good pickup, barehanded, fired a good throw over to first, but uh, good hustle from Sather. He beats out the throw. The Cardinals score three in the bottom of the uh, seventh to come from behind and get the victory. We'll be back to wrap things up right after this. This is a man who almost learned to walk at a rehab center that almost got built by people who almost gave money, almost gave. How good is almost giving? About as good as almost walking. And what'd she say? She said whatever. No, she says that all the time. What's that? Hello? I'm on the phone. Mom, I'm on the phone! Hello? I'm on the phone. Who's this? It's me. I'm on the phone. Mom. Oh, you're on the phone. <laughs> all right. Sorry! Sorry. Sorry. Okay, anyway. Who are you talking to? Kelly? Mom. All right. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who would love to put up with you. Tick, 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 The CTN Sports Post Game Show is brought to you by SportsPrepZone.com. Complete coverage of high school sports in the North Metro and another proud sponsor of high school athletics on CTN. The Coon Rapids Cardinals able to find a way to win in the bottom of the seventh inning. They score three runs to come from behind and get the victory for Medina, a game that they trailed most of the way. And they... Just a weird way to win. Sather with this little trickler that barely made it past pitcher's mouth. Great job by Matei hustling it and barehanding and throwing it over, but but uh, Sather beats it out. It came with bases loaded and two out, and uh, the Cardinals end up with the victory. And Howie, a very entertaining game. It went back and forth, and, uh, uh, you know, there were a few more errors than we like to see, but but an entertaining game and a, and a fun game to watch. Well, it was an ugly game, but, but again, a, a win is a win, and the Cardinals will take it no matter what. They've been hitting the ball 12 hits. They had 13 hits against Maple Grove. Yeah, I'd so, say it wasn't as ugly as that Elk River game. No, it, was, it wasn't it was as ugly as that, that Elk River game, but, again, the Cardinals doing what they need to do, coming back with three runs in the bottom half of the seventh to get the victory, and, and – uh, they got to be happy with the fact that they got a W. I think they've got some things to continue to work on. Uh, got to reduce the errors. I think their pitching's uh, not where they want it to be at this point of the year. So, but again, they're hitting the ball and they're and they're getting the Ws. Yeah, and and as the uh, we talked a little bit with some of the Dinah coaching staff, and they said, you know, this we've been kind of they've been kind of snake bitten this year. They've yep. lost a lot of one run games. Four, but, but uh, they know 
that, you know, you get it out of the way early because come playoff time, everybody goes in at, with, at zero and zero. And uh, so they, they their team has the right attitude despite uh, some tough losses. Well, let's take a look at the play of the game delivered by the Coon Rapids Herald. It comes uh, from the fourth inning. Preston Gazzoni couldn't quite make the stop, but able to recover it. Throws out. Great job by Blake Wendland blocking the, blocking the plate and sweeping the tag to get Willie Chen. And it may have been a different story had he scored that run there. Instead, uh, the Cardinals end up coming away with a one-run win, 8-7 to seven, the final. Well, and, and, you know, and he did what he needed to do at the plate is it blocking it. Uh, just a perfect play. Nice throw from Preston to set it up. And, and the fact that they, they got the out at the plate, uh, much to the chagrin of the Adina squad because they felt that uh, that was a safe play. But nonetheless, Cardinals make the play, and then they come away with the 8-7 victory. And let's take a look at what we have coming up for you here on CTN. Baseball next Thursday, the Cardinals hosting conference rival Anoka. Then we see the softball team on Monday, the 21st. That's the beginning of the playoffs. And then we'll see the baseball team as they start the playoffs later in the month on the 29th. But that's going to do it for this edition of CTN Sports. Again, the final score from the Cardinals Sports Complex. It's Coon Rapids 8, Edina 7. I want to thank everybody out there for joining us and continuing to support everything we do here at CTN. For the entire crew, including Mr. Iowa Shapiro, I'm Joe Young saying good night. The CTN Sports Post Game Show is brought to you by SportsPrepZone.com. Complete coverage of high school sports in the North Metro and another proud sponsor of high school athletics on CTN.